Hi, this presentation will provide an overview of sampling distributions and the idea of the central limit theorem. Now recall that a sample is a subset of a population, and if we were to repeatedly draw samples from that population, the individual samples would begin to form a distribution, and that is what we refer to as the sampling distribution, and its uh, size n is the number of samples drawn from the population. And if what we're interested in uh, understanding is the mean and we're drawing samples, then the means for each sample are a sampling distribution of sample means. Uh, we don't necessarily just want to look at means. We could also look at standard deviations or variances, for instance. So the sampling distribution consists of the values of the sample means in this case. X bar indicates that it's a sample mean, not a population mean. And uh, the subscript indicates which number sample it is. These are the properties of sampling distributions. Uh, the first is an important one, that the, uh, the mean of sample means is equal to the population mean. Uh, and that's if we take an infinite number of samples. Uh, if we take two samples, that may not be the case. Uh, but as we see with the central limit theorem, that's, that's how we know that. The standard deviation of the sample means is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n and is number of samples, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means is called standard error of the mean. And so standard error is going to be an important concept in some of the other applications that we will examine down the road. And here's an example of sampling distribution of sample means. Uh, if we have population values 5, 10, 15, and 20, and they're written on slips of paper, put in a hat, uh, two slips randomly selected with replacement, so these are independent with equal probability. We find the mean standard deviation and variance of the population as follows. Uh, we see that uh, mu is 12.5 and variance is 5.59 and this, sorry, that's the standard deviation is 5.59 and the variance is 31.25. And with the same example, we can graph the probability histogram for the population values. It's a uniform distribution as all values have the same probability of being selected. There's four pieces of paper and a hat. Each has an equal chance of selection. And continuing the example, if we wanted to draw two, two slips of paper at a time, uh, we can list out all the possible uh, combinations of two. So we see that we have uh, drawing the five twice, uh, drawing the five and the 10, the five and the 15, and the five and the 20. Then we get to the tens first, followed by the 5, the 10, the 15, and the 20, and so on, the 15s, the 20s, and uh, the sample mean for each of those combinations shown there as the average of the two. And continuing the example based on the sample means that we identified previously, we can see the frequency of those uh, appearing, those sample means from the two slips of paper, and then we see the probability of each of those uh, sample means. And we can see that if we graph the probability histogram for the sample means, that uh, the greatest chance is 12.5, as we saw on the previous uh, slide. And that has the greatest uh, 0.25 probability is the, the greatest probability of, of all the sample means, and then it uh, has a symmetrical normal distribution as we trail out towards the edges. So the central limit theorem uh, says if a sample of size n greater than or equal to 30 is taken from a population with any type of distribution, doesn't have to be normal, that has a mean mu and standard deviation sigma, sample means will have a normal distribution. And the central limit theorem also says if population is normally distributed, uh, that the sample means will have a normal distribution for any size sample. Uh, so here we're assuming normality, whereas previously with a larger sample, uh, the sampling distribution still comes up normal. In both cases, whether we're talking about a uh, non-normal sample of over 30 or a normal sample of any size, in either case, we're going to see that the mean of the sample means is equal to the population mean, according to the central limit theorem. And that is also true for the standard deviation. 
uh, uh, the standard deviation of the samples will be uh, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. And that is the standard error of the mean. So here's an example of finding the mean and the standard error of the population. The heights of uh, fully grown magnolia bushes with a mean height of 8 feet and a standard deviation of 0.7. If there's a sample of 38 bushes randomly selected, the mean of each sample is determined, uh, then we know that the mean, the sampling mean, is going to be equal to the population mean, so that's uh, straight from here, 8 feet. And we find the standard error by taking the standard deviation of the sampling of the sample, and uh, from that we see this equation, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So 0.7 divided by the square root of 38, and that gives us 0.11. And based on the central limit theorem, uh, given, given these uh, figures that we have calculated, uh, the sampling size is greater than 30, so the sampling distribution can be approximated by the normal distribution. And continuing the example, uh, let's say we want to find the probability that the mean height of the 38 bushes is less than 7.8, which is going to be, as you can tell from the normal distribution, it's going to be highly unlikely. So the first thing we have to do is find our z-score. And uh, we have our equation here for that. We take our value, x bar, which in this case 7.8 minus the mean of 8. Uh, that will give us negative 0.2. We divide that by the standard deviation, which we found before, of 0.11. And that will give us uh, negative 1.82. And if we uh, use our z-score table, we can find that the cumulative area for that score 0 0.0344, so the probability that the mean height of bushes is less than 7.8 feet is 0 0.034 or 3.44 percent. And here's another example. Uh, if we have an average on a statistics test that was 78 and a standard deviation of 8, if the test scores are normally distributed, as this shows, uh, we want to find the probability that the mean score of 25 students randomly selected will be between 75 and 79. So for that, you'll recall we need to fi first find the cumulative area uh, to the left of the 79, but we will have to first turn that into a z-score, and then we will subtract the cumulative area to the left of 75, which we also have to find the z-score for, and then we subtract it from the, the larger area. And that's the process. So we find Z1 and Z2. We find the cumulative areas. And then we subtract the smaller area from the larger area. And that will give us 0 0.7056. So about 70% of the 25 students will have a mean score between 75 and 79. Here's another example. Now if we have a population mean salary for auto mechanics of 34,000, with a standard deviation of 2,500, we want to find the probability that the mean salary for a random uh, sample of 50 mechanics will be greater than 35,000. So we have our mean of 34,000. Our standard deviation uh, of the sample will be the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. n in this case is 50 and the standard deviation 2,500. That will give us 353.55, our standard error. And uh, from that, we go to get the z-score for 35,000 uh, relative to the mean of 34, which is going to be a 1,000 difference divided by standard error, which is 353.55, and that will give us 2.83. Okay, so from there, we find that uh, the probability of z being greater than 2.83 is 1 minus... Uh, what's to the left of that score. Remember, that's how we find areas to the right. We have to first find the area to the left and subtract it from 1. Uh, in this case, 0.997 is uh, to the left, so the area to the right will be 1 minus that, and that turns out to be 0.0023, which is very unlikely, then, that uh, we would find such a mean for a sample of 50 randomly selected mechanics to be 35,000. Or 
0.23% chance. Pretty so let's take that same example, but this time we'll replace the number 50 mechanics uh, with the number 1. We're just going to find one individual as a sample. And we get a very different number. In this case, uh, we come down to 0.3446. It's still a smaller chance, but now it's about a 1 in 3 instead of uh, the, ast well, not astronomical, but extremely unlikely 0.2%. Uh, we have 30, 34% chance. And continuing with the example of mechanics, we could also ask uh, in a group of 50 mechanics, how many would have a salary greater than $35,000? Uh, so the probability of X being greater than 35,000 is equal to 0.3446. And 34.46% of 50 is 17.23. We round that off. And so therefore we expect about 17%. So here you see we've come to a value based on an area as we reviewed before.